Hey, I'm Sven from the Beam Music Project. Let's go on with our simple amplifier plugin. As we already have defined the plugin metadata in the turtle file and we learned how LB2 plugins work, we can start coding. First we create a new file and call it myamp.c. As you see, we will write this plugin in C. Let's recall. The plugin needs a class definition, the seven internal core methods, and an interface function in C. I put this as comments into the code file. Comments in C are placed between a slash and an asterisk. But how to start? The easiest way is to get the function headers from the LV2 plugin specification site at lv 2 plugin ns. Go to the API. There are a lot of definitions. But just below we find the head of our interface export function. Copy and paste it into our project. A function header in C always consists of the name of the function, its parameters, in our case an unsigned integer number with the size of 32 bits which we will call index, and the return type. The return type is the type of the result which the function will return. In our case it's the LV2 descriptor structure type defined in the LV2 standards. Or, to be more precise, a pointer to the data location of this structure. This, the pointer, is represented in C by an asterisk. And the function headers may also contain some additional statements. In our case it's const and LV2 symbol export. LV2 symbol export is once again from the LV2 standards and make this function visible for the outside world. The body of a function will be placed between curly brackets. We will fill this body with some code later. Now to the seven internal core methods or functions which we will later reference in the LV2 descriptor. The easiest way to find out what they are and how they look like is to copy them from the API LV2 descriptor chapter in the LV2 documentations. It's a great resource. Thanks, David. But we have to do some modifications first. We have to replace the first parenthesized expression behind the type, which is reserved for the function name, by the function name. You can almost freely choose any name but it's a good idea to keep them from the template. And we also add empty bodies to be filled later. So, as we can see, there are a lot of red lines in the code. My editor is complaining about some unknown symbols. To fix this, we need to include at least the headers of the LV2 library LV2.h. Next, we can go to the class definition. C itself doesn't have any class keyboard. You would need C++, but anyway, there's always a way in C for almost everything. The way to define a class in C is to define a structure by typing type def struct, followed by the body of the struct, and the name of the class, myamp, will be at the end of the type def. What shall we store inside this definition? Always the addresses of the ports, which we will receive from the door, and we will store them as pointers. In our case it would be audio in PTR, audio out PTR, and mptr. As pointers may be new for the one or the other user, let me shortly introduce you into this data type. Pointers are an important tool in C and C++, but are absent in many other programming languages. Imagine, you have got a cookbook, and you want to compose a menu, with starter, main dish, and so on. You can copy all the receipts you need, or simply write down the pages where you find the respective receipt, and this is a pointer. To define a pointer in C, we have to provide the type of its content, followed by an asterisk and the variable name. As the audio buffers contain sample data as floating point values, short float, we can type float asterisk audio in PTR. And the same for the audio output buffer, float asterisk audio out PTR. And for the amp controller, float asterisk amp PTR. In the case of our simple amplifier plugin, we really don't need to store any other data. So that's all. Now we can take a look at the core functions and let's start with instantiate. When instantiate is called by the door, the door passes a pointer to the plugin descriptor, the sample rate, the path where the plugin is stored, and a pointer to a block of features provided. 
what we exactly need? None of them, in the case of our simple amplifier. So we don't need to worry about them inside the body. And finally the plugin will return a LV2 handle, which is appointed to an object created on the base of the plugin class. What we have to do inside the instantiate function is to create an object or instance of the plugin class. So instantiate is a constructor. In C we are responsible for the memory management, so we have to do everything by hand. First we have to allocate memory and clear it and store the address into a pointer. There's a clear allocate function in the C standard library called calloc which exactly can do this. This function expects the number of objects on block to be created and their respective size as parameters. And it returns a void pointer which can easily be converted to other pointer types. So we firstly define a myAM pointer called m and it will contain the address returned by calloc for one object of the size of myAM. As some compilers may complain about different types, my M pointer on the left side and the empty avoid pointer returned by calloc on the right side, we set this conversion or casting operator in front of calloc. Then we only need to return this pointer. The next core function is connect port. This function is called by the door to inform the plugin about the locations of the audio and the controller buffers. The handle, a pointer to the respective instance, is passed by the door as well as a port number as defined in the plugin turtle file and a void pointer to the location of the buffers provided. Connect port is devoid of any return value. It returns void. Inside the body we will store these locations into the pointers of our instance. Audio in PTR, audio out PTR and MPTR. First we convert the LV2 handle called instance to a pointer of our myAMP type and call it M. Then we check the pointer. If not M not is presented by an exclamation mark, then return immediately. The if statement is one of the conditional statements in C. It is followed by an expression in parentheses which can be true or false and a command that is executed if the expression is true. M itself would be true if it contains an address different than null and false if null, the so-called null pointer. A null pointer should always be used to signal that there is nothing where the pointer points to. For instance, if the memory of an instance has been freed in the meantime, then the pointers should always be set to null instead of keeping the old address of the deleted resource and risking crashes. Think about our cookbook example. You still have your notes with the page numbers, but you replace the cookbook by a thriller by Agatha Christie. Then the pages you noted may point to Arsenic or Strychnine. And you shouldn't serve this at all. To get sure that this will not happen, you should state that the pages aren't valid anymore by a null pointer. Back from the pointers excurse to our connect port function. Now we should check the port value. Port can be 0, 1 or 2 in our case as defined by LV2 index in our plugin turtle file. We can use another conditional statement for multiple conditional checks like these. There is a switch keyword in C that is also present in many other programming languages. Switch is followed by a countable variable like an integer and a body. Inside the body will be a number of case statements. Each of these statements consists of the keyword case and the condition value followed by a colon. A block of commands follows each of these case statements. A break command can be added to the end of each block if we don't want to execute the commands of the next block too. So we type switch port case 0. This was the LV2 index for our audio import. Then we set the class member audio in PTR of our object which is addressed by M. We do this by M arrow audio in PTR and set it to the data location, converted from a void pointer to a float pointer. The error operator is only a shortcut of the pointer D reference. This means access to the content where the pointer points to, followed by an access to a member of a struct, here audio in PTR. Break is added after each case block as we do not want the execution of the code of the next case. Now we can copy and paste this and do the same for port 1 to assign M error audio or PTR and for port 2 and m arrow amp ptr. Switch may also have got a default expression that is executed for all other port values here. But this shouldn't happen as we only defined these three ports. The next core function is activate. This one is called by the door to initialize the instance. But as there is nothing in the instance and the port pointers, we can leave the body empty. I only leave a command. And the same for the deactivate function. Run is a core function to process or to generate audio data. This function is called by the DAW in real time again and again and again. 
depending on the system settings, the sample rate and the audio buffer size, typically every some 20 or 10 milliseconds or even shorter. The door passes the instance handle and the number of samples to run, the sample count. And returns nothing. Void. First we convert the handle instance to a point of our myamp type and call it M. And then we check if M is different from null as we did before. As we will access to the audio in and the audio out and the amp buffers in this function, we should check the respective pointers in our instance to be connected to these buffers. They were initialized by zero in instance 8 but must be different if they were set in connect port. So we abort run if one of the pointers is not different from null by if not m arrow audio in ptr or represented by a double pipe not m arrow audio out ptr or not m arrow amp ptr then return once these checks are done we can safely access to the buffers and sequentially process the data we will do this in a for loop the for loop is a very powerful tool in c it consists of a head with three expressions and a body the first expression is initializer, the second one is an expression that must be true to proceed the loop, and the third one contains expressions executed at the end of the loop, like in currenters. To sequentially process each sample we type, for unsigned in 33t i is 0, i is lower than sample count, increment i by 1 by plus plus i. The algorithm for processing the audio samples inside the body of the for loop is very simple, for this simple amplifier. The audio signal is simply multiplied by the factor represented by M. As in C, errors can be addressed by pointers with the index in squared brackets, we can type M arrow audio out PTR index I is M arrow audio in PTR index I times the buffer content where M arrow amp PTR points to. This is done with the deal reference operator in front of the variable name. So this loop runs from i is 0 to just before the number of sample count. And each sample in audio out indexed by i is set to the respective audio in sample times the amp value. The next function to take hands on is cleanup. It's called by the door to remove the instance and to free the occupied memory. It's a destructor. The door only needs to pass the instance handle and doesn't expect any value returned by the function. We first have to convert the handle and check for null pointer. As we did it already before in connect port and run, we simply copy and paste this code snippet. Then, we only need to free the memory where m points to, by free m. The final core function is the optional extension data function. It's called by the door by passing a c string. Yes, a c string is defined by a pointer to its first character. And the extension data function returns a flexible void pointer. As we do not need any extension data in the plugin, we can simply return a null pointer. The code checker and my editor complains about an unknown null. Null is not a reserved name in C, but it is defined in one of the C standard libraries. It's always a bit tricky to find the right library. A good resource to look is cppreference.com. There we see that null is defined in standarddev.h. So we can include standarddev.h. I usually also take along standard lib.h for memory management functions like malloc and free, standard int.h for the fixed size integers like uint33 underline t, and math.h for the almost endless number of mathematical functions in there. But we don't need this one for our simple amplifier. As now all work with the core functions is done, we can go back to the interface to return a pointer to a descriptor struct. Let's first look again how a LP2 descriptor is built. It consists of a plugin URI as a C string followed by the seven core functions in the order we used. So we define this descriptor struct first. const, as we don't want to change it anymore, LB2 descriptor, with capitals, not to confuse with the interface function descriptor, descriptor is our plugin URI and the seven core functions. We could also use null if the respective function is not used or not defined. Now we can return a pointer to this descriptor struct in the interface body, but only if the index is zero. So we type, if index equals zero, then return a reference this is a reference operator which creates a pointer for a variable of the descriptor and otherwise else null pointer. Else is not really needed here. 
think about y. Yes, if the condition is true, if index is zero, then the program already returns from the interface function. And the second line is anyway only executed if the program didn't call return before. There's another important point about plugins. Everything inside a plugin should be hidden for the outside except the interface. There's a private statement in many other object-oriented programming languages, but it's called static in C. So we put the static statement in front of the core functions and the descriptor definition. And fix the order of statements for the descriptor. This is all for the code. Now we can compile. Open a terminal and call GCC and set some compiler parameters. The easiest way is to take them as they are. It's a bit too complex for the first, but I will explain it in a later compiler and make file tutorial. I only mention that I put the source file, the output option minus O and the output file at the end. No errors. Compiling succeeded. If you get an error, check if all packages I recommended in a previous video are installed and check for typos. Then we create a myamp.lv2 subfolder within one of the system-defined lv2 folders. The easiest way is to take the hidden.lv2 folder in your home directory. Copy the just-generated SO file and the TTL files from our working directory into this new folder. Then we can test it. I will do it with gel from the command line, but feel free for direct testing within a DAW. I type gelf.gtk3 and the plugin URI. You may use another gel variant depending on what's installed on your system. And there it is. Have to manually connect the plugin in my case. And it works! We successfully made our first LV2 plugin. Also watch the other videos in this series. For more information take a look into the LV2 tutorial GitHub repository.